lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, uh, one of the believers had the question, has Ezekiel 38 and 39 been fulfilled? One can make the argument that there was a partial fulfillment of Ezekiel 37, the dry bones, a partial fulfillment with the rebirth of Israel after the Babylonian captivity, which commenced in 585 BC, 70 years later, in fulfillment of the prophetic predictions of Jeremiah, um, Isaiah, <clears throat> um, and Daniel, they returned. One can make that argument. One can also make the argument that you have a fulfillment another fulfillment of Ezekiel 37, the dry bones, with the reestablishment of the modern state of Israel. When you say that the Gog and Magog scenario of chapters 38 and 39 have been fulfilled, this is absolutely impossible for the following reason. We interpret the Old Testament in light of the New Testament revelation of Jesus. Therefore, the ultimate, final, and main meaning of Gog and Magog must be the one that the New Testament states it is. That is, at the end of the millennial reign of Christ, in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, Satan is momentarily freed in Revelation, chapter 20, verses 7 eight, nine, and ten. That must be the main battle of Gog and Magog. It states Gog and Magog directly in the New Testament. That must be the main one, because that's the one that the New Testament says. Well, we've not had the millennial reign of Christ. Jesus has not returned and set up his messianic kingdom. There's no possible way that that could have happened. It's complete and utter nonsense to suggest otherwise. Now, there is an opinion that is my opinion, but it's only an opinion. I'm not dogmatic about it. It just deductively seems to me to be the case, but I'm not basing doctrine on it. It seems to me and to many people that because of the battlefield scenario with cleaning up the debris for seven months and so forth, that there Maybe two battles of Gog and Magog. Another one that will be recapitulated at the end of the millennial reign of Christ, and that will foreshadow, prefigure it, when it's ultimately replayed at the end of the millennium. Many people believe that contemporary events in the Middle East are setting the stage for well, that kind of a Gog and Magog scenario now. Well, world events are on their side in buttressing this theory. I'm inclined to say myself, it seems to me there can be two battles of Gog and Magog. It seems to me. If I'm wrong, my apologies, but I'm not teaching it as doctrine. It just seems to me there may be two, and that present events in the Middle East are setting the stage for it. Many people agree with that. Some may not. And it's fine if they know. But the ultimate one, however, must be in Revelation 20, verses 7, 8, 9, 10. It must be that one. And that cannot possibly have happened. It's ludicrous to suggest otherwise. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless.
Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Fash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Memorial Catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.